Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Court Johnson. I'm the VP of Growth here at AtScale. So I want to welcome everyone to AtScale's weekly demo. Today, we have Chris Oshiro, VP of Sales and Engineering, that will be providing the demo and, and doing a high-level overview of AtScale. Uh, if you do have questions, please enter them into the questions section of the webinar. Uh, if we don't have enough time within this half hour to answer them, we'll make sure to follow up with everybody individually uh, so that everybody's uh, questions will be answered. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So with that, I'll hand it over to Chris Oshiro and uh, let him take it away. Chris. Hey, thanks a lot, Court. Hey, everyone. As, as Court mentioned, uh, I, I run the uh, pre-sales organization at scale. Been with that scale now, coming on four years, so a good long time, uh, and seeing all the at scale customers uh, come and, and implement and become successful. Uh, so I'll, I'll be looking forward to some of the questions and, and hopefully help out the team answer any kind of future questions. Um, so here's what I thought we'd do today. Since there's a, a number of recordings out there of at scale, um, and this is one of our first of our regular webinar uh, demos, I thought we'd go through the steps of an at scale demonstration. Uh, but also with an eye on some of the new capabilities that have been released in 7.4. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big deal release for us. Actually, internally, we kind of played with the idea of, of naming it something different because it is such a major release for us. Uh, but it's setting us up for some totally new capabilities in the future. And I think that's when we'll start renaming our releases. Uh, and we'll talk about those capabilities in the future, in a future webinar. Anyway. We're gonna start with architecture because really uh, it's all about architecture. If you, if you uh, are a customer of AtScale or you're thinking about AtScale, you really consider AtScale's architecture uh, above all else because we play so well within not just um, you know, on-prem, Hadoop, cloud uh, data sources. We, we were architected in a way that is very light, intelligent, you know, pushes the compute load down to the compute uh, platforms uh, but still allow all BI tools to, to connect. So what we're looking at here from, a, from an architecture perspective is right you know, smack in the middle, you have at scale. Now at scale installs as a single virtual machine. Uh, this is true for regardless of what the underlying data platform is. And should you want some you know, horizontal scaling or high availability, you could have multiple at scale servers, but from a minimum requirement is a single at scale uh, server that then communicates both to the cloud uh, meaning that it can communicate to Google BigQuery, Redshift, uh, Snowflake. It can also uh, essentially be a, a data service for all your BI tools. So you will send MDX queries via uh, Excel pivot tables, maybe that's Power BI, uh, or, or SQL requests that are coming from Tableau, uh, Click, what have you, right? Um, that data service is defined in an at scale virtual cube. It is an abstraction layer, as many of you already know, uh, but when we receive queries through this, you know, abstraction layer, what we do is we create a layer called adaptive cache. So the adaptive cache concept that you're seeing here down on the bottom is essentially heuristic, dynamic, intelligent aggregate tables. And, and I use those words not to just throw out a bunch of big words, but really it's, it's at scale's ability to learn queries through predictive and some ML algorithms to figure out what kind of chunks of the cubes we should materialize, we should, you, we should uh, maintain, incrementally augment uh, moving forward. Because once I start re, uh, creating this adaptive cache, inbound uh, queries that are coming from the BI tools, at scale understands whether or not those queries need to be answered by our adaptive cache, or alternatively, potentially go to raw data. Um, at this point in time, once you have at scale installed and it's looking at the uh, underlying data source, we're building a, fordum, uh, fordum, uh, a big chunk of adaptive cache so that we can answer uh, all questions. The architecture also looks very similar if you have Hadoop either on-premise and frankly, this architecture is identical if you have Hadoop in the cloud. Again, acts exactly the same way. At scale sits as a, as a virtual machine that has access to the uh, Hadoop uh, cluster and utilizing multiple engines on Hadoop. So one of the interesting things about the Hadoop space is that you have Spark, Impala, Hive, uh, inclusive of Presto and other type of engines. And at scale in, uh, in one go can actually take advantage of the multiple engines uh, underneath the Hadoop cluster. But at the end of the day, whether it's Hadoop, whether it's cloud, which you know, we know everyone is going to the cloud and trying to get to the cloud, how do we, how do we allow our customers to make that migration possible? Really, if we want to absorb new 
modern data platforms, we have to make it available to all of the legacy BI tools. You have to have governance around this. You have to provide that ability to scale across data and be performant, right? So in that, in, in, in that light, we're gonna go ahead and move into the demonstration. And first, I'll do a quick list of things that are new in 7.4, like I mentioned. So 7.4, again, big release. I'm not going to read this all to you, but first thing you might notice if you're an existing customer is our documentation page. Actually, it looks different. So we revamped our documentation page. And if we were to scroll down on this list of new features in 7.4, we have a new install, which is now completely decoupled. We have a concept called Composer, which is going to allow you to do new type of transformations inside of at scale, a lot easier, uh, a lot more consistent to what other folks are, are familiar with and other tools. Uh, there's some validation of the models, which you'll see. One of my favorite features is the advanced queries tab that allows you to see the life of a query. We'll see that today as well. Uh, and the list is large. So I'm not going to go through all this because, again, the list is large, but we've got some fantastic releases um, that not only do what we just, <laughs> that I just spoke about, but we're also doing things such as data uh, new data platform support like Snowflake, for example, um, and, and of course the new documentation site. So let's go into the product here. All right, so I'm logged into at scale 7.4. Let me maximize the screen so we can all see this well. Uh, this is the new homepage. Uh, when you come into this homepage, you're, uh, you're coming in as someone who is going to develop and build out new projects and cubes. So we give you a couple of options. Uh, if, if you were on 7.3, maybe 7.2 and earlier, you might've seen some of this page, but it's now much cleaner. We have options for importing Tableau workbooks. We've added a new option, uh, import analysis services cube. So if you're a, an existing uh, customer with SQL analysis services and you wanna take advantage of a distributed platform or a cloud platform from a, from a cube perspective, we can import an analysis services cube and then translate that into an at scale, uh, into an at scale model. So we're going to jump into this internet sales cube. And again, if you've seen a couple of webinars or if you sat in a couple of demos, uh, you, this, this model will look uh, pretty familiar with you, familiar to you. So I'm not going to, you know, belabor it too much. The actual canvas model environment hasn't changed. Uh, we've kept the, the modeling instance here. We've added some additional, um, representation, iconic representation for what is, uh, calculated members or cal calculated columns, excuse me. Um, you'll see all new data sources here. There's a concept of cube data preview, which is not totally new, but uh, a few of you might not have seen this. This is our uh, the ability to run queries inside of at scale. And a uh, quick, um, quick note, this does not mean that at scale is building out a comprehensive BI tool. Really what the cube data preview uh, capability uh, you know, was designed for was for the cube, the cube designer. Someone who comes in and builds out the logic to the data tables, uh, the relationships between those tables, and then publishing out the, the elements, you know, like, the, like the measures and the hierarchies and dimensions. It was designed for that person to kind of validate what, what he or she is doing, right? Uh, so you could do that in the cube data preview. What we'll do really quick is we're gonna take this uh, model, right? And we're going to we're going to augment it. We're going to make a, a quick change. Uh, so what we've done here is I'll, I'll show you how we pre preview the raw data. Uh, this looks very similar if you've seen some earlier versions. But at scale gives you a preview of some of the data that exists underneath the covers to figure out you know what does the data look like? What do I want to do with it? What kind of transformations might might I want to do here? Um, so this product info field. Is a is a string field, but it's actually it's actually a map field, right? It has a series of key value pairs. So you can see on this particular line, this product is color red, size 48. It's a weight of 14.13 uh, style U, right? So if we extract some of these elements, for example, size, color, and dimension that you can see right above here on my canvas, uh, what we didn't do is we didn't extract and we didn't uh, declare weight. So if I go back up here and show you the, the product info field, you'll notice that I can extract any number of these, of these elements uh, with understanding the delimiter, et cetera. Once I've done that and we have weight understood, the way you declare any element in at scale dimension or measure is you simply drag and drop that object and you drop it onto the panel here, dimension panel in this case. And it's gonna go ahead and drop it in there. 
and Wade was dropped onto the canvas right behind his uh, fact table. Uh, so now Wade is, is a proper dimension. It's no longer just a column on the fact table, but it's actually been declared as a dimension, right? One of the differences that, that, we're, we're, that we moved in terms of the uh, publishing capability is we moved the publishing capability out to the projects page. So instead of publishing right here, what we do is you go back to the project page and you publish here. We have this new navigation that you'll notice here on the left-hand side where you have draft versions of projects and cubes and actually published versions of, 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 uh, of cubes and uh, projects. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and republish this. Finish that guy, right? So we've made a minor change. Let's go over to my BI tool. We'll start with uh, Tableau here. Maximize the screen to the tad. So from a Tableau perspective, this is not a Tableau demo. Obviously we, we work with, uh, you know, Tableau and other BI tools locally on my laptop, but customers are using a plethora of their BI tools, favorite BI tools. Uh, really what AtScale is doing for us is here on the left-hand side. So we have our visualization here on the right, which is a little bit messy. We're not quite sure what to make of this particular visual, visualization. But the data service that is essentially powering uh, the, the analytics is here on this left-hand side. And this is it's the data service that AtScale is in fact uh, preparing for us. So we have dimensions that are, that are uh, bucketing attributes and have some hierarchies, like a geography hierarchy, for, for example, right? You can have multiple hierarchies within a dimension that's a, a very common place with different type of custom dimensions or custom hierarchies is very um, um, very common for for date uh, dimensions for example to have different type of different type of hierarchies depending on how you look at the calendar right so any one of these elements here are designed in the at scale model any one of these uh, measures are also calculated inside the at scale model if we go ahead and refresh this data source we should see here on the left-hand side that we'll have weight added here. And there it is, right? So there, here, here is weight, right? Initially, this wasn't part of this data source. Now that we've added it onto the at scale model and published it, we can go ahead and drag and drop weight into my filters panel and begin to utilize this, this new dimension, right? So initially it wasn't there, now it's here and we can begin to utilize this. This is really important, the agility to publish out changes and then immediately able to query uh, the cube is very different for at scale because we don't need to pre-materialize ETL, do some type of process to create a data mark, an index, what have you. At scale by the virtue of being a virtual um, abstraction, that, that virtual cube is an abstraction layer. That means that any kind of changes we make to that abstraction layer is immediately available. And once at scale starts to receive queries, it then and really only then that at scale starts to optimize that, that caching layer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and check off all of these weight options, except for this one that appears to be null data. Uh, maybe someone you know didn't quite get to cleaning up all the data. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that and click okay. Uh, and we'll have the visualization change. Now this visualization is a lot better. We're seeing some trends and, and some, some groupings of, of data. Uh, so this is a lot better, right? So the ability to be able to agilely modify this data service and then begin to query it, really important. What's happening on the at scale side? So we just spent a little bit of time as the BI developer, right? Let's go back to at scale. Let's take a look at the queries that are coming inbound. So I'm gonna click on my queries tab and we'll take a look at, let's see, we'll just open up this last query. So this query was run by user admin, that's me. The filters panel is now here up on top. So you can change the type of query type, um, the, the query status, you know, when the queries were, were, were happening, et cetera. We put it here on top. This way you can collapse it and you have a little bit more real estate. This was important because of this. Now let me go ahead and expand this last query. And here is a big new feature for at scale. So we've, we've introduced the life of the query capability inside of, inside of our query page, and it's decomposing the stages of the query. So in the past, what you've seen is basically multiple subqueries. If the at scale query 
was translated into multiple subqueries, you would have seen a list of multiple subqueries here. Now you actually see the stages of the query. So you can hover over, see how long something is taking, see how long the planning is taking, you know, and really here's the actual query, right? This is the actual query execution phase. So now we can expand that query execution phase and we can see the outbound query and how long it took. The reason why we're only seeing one here, uh, folks, is because in that particular query, my inbound query resulted in just one single outbound query. This is uh, not always the case. In fact, we'll see a little bit later in the demo. Sometimes it's decomposed into various queries, right? So giving us a little bit more exposure. And if I want to expand this one a little further, I can now see uh, the actual query and you'll see some additional uh, information about wait time, execution, fetch time, right? So incredibly enhanced uh, query page. Uh, we heard from our customers that they wanted a little bit more visibility into how to identify where I might have a bottleneck. Uh, you know, hey, at scale is operating really fast, but my BI tool is not rendering yet. You know, what's going on? So we wanted to expose a little bit more information uh, with the life of the query, and we, we expect to enhance it a little further as well. So I hope you like that part. Uh, let's go ahead and switch over real quick to Excel. Let me bring in Excel. Since we're talking about you know, queries and we're talking about inbound queries and, and translations, et cetera. I figured we'd go ahead and go into Excel. It is a, obviously our second BI tool for this demonstration, but it's a very different BI tool as everyone is well aware. Uh, still the world's most popular BI tool, but there are substantial differences between the way Tableau communicates to a backend data source and the way Excel communicates to backend data sources. The first thing to, to know is that when you typically use even a tool like Tableau, which is fantastic, typically a lot of folks like to do data extracts into Tableau. They like to pull data into the BI tool and do something. The, the challenge with doing that is that number one, you're dealing with massive amount of scale today, right? Which means that you might not be able to bring over to the BI tool the amount of data that you could do uh, five, 10 years ago, right? So we need to have interactive queries. The second thing, if we're looking at Excel, is Excel in a number of other BI tools, does, it does not speak SQL. It speaks actually MDX. Now, Excel, to be fair, could speak some SQL, but then it actually has to do an extraction of data. When Excel speaks MDX, it actually does so with, in the form of a pivot table, which is really one of the most um, popular ways of querying through Excel. So we're going, going to go ahead and connect that way. I'm going to click on my get external data, from Excel, we're going to go to other sources and click on analysis services. So AtScale doesn't have a AtScale driver that needs to get installed here for communication of Excel over to AtScale. We essentially emulate analysis services. So when you click analysis services, you're going to plug in a server name here. All right, so this is my XMLA uh, URL, right? It's the way that AtScale receives. It's, an, it's a HTML call, but it's going to connect uh, with the XMLA listener. I'm going to go in with the same ID that I logged into Tableau. And we're hitting the same cube, right? In fact, if I had multiple projects here, I would have had uh, a list of projects and then each project could have multiple cubes, right? So that's the hierarchy inside of AtScale. I'm going to go ahead and select that internet sales cube and click finish. Yep. Uh, all right, so we're going to go ahead and create a pivot table report. And what we're gonna see in our pivot table is all of the elements that we saw on Tableau on the left-hand side, but in Excel, it's over here on the right-hand side. So we have all of the measures, like customer metrics, sales metrics. Uh, we have all of the dimensionality in here, inclusive of the color, color, product dimensions, the product hierarchy that we were working with inside Tableau. Uh, and also, by the way, the Q previewer, if you remember, and all the way down here at the bottom, we got weight, right? So weight was part of the um, uh, part of the new element, right? The modification that we made to that uh, to that cube. So if we go ahead and add a couple of these guys, I'm going to bring in order quantity and sales amount. Uh, we're going to look at this via the the hierarchy, like we did over in the previewer, and by the way, also in in Tableau. Uh, we've got this view of this of this hierarchy via the accordion folders, and we're going to go ahead and expand, right? So you can go ahead and drill down in this nature. Drill down in, in Excel has this nice kind of step down, drill down, 
right? And drill down in, in Tableau is, is not so much step down, but it's actually like expansive, right? If you want, if I want to see all states underneath country, I drill down on country, I get all states. The difference in Excel is if I drill down on one state, I would get that state's cities, right? So it's a little bit different behavior, but at the end of the day, we define these elements in that scale the same exact way. Last thing I'll do is I'm going to drag weight into my filters panel. It's the same kind of operation that the Tableau user did, right? So the Tableau user used weight, uh, dragged over the filters panel and got a list of, uh, of weight members. We'll do the same here in Excel and show you that we have, you know, a list of weight members, right? So this is from the BI user, uh, makes a lot of sense and not entirely revolutionary. Here's why it's revolutionary on the at scale side. Let's take a step back. If you go back to the to this query page, let me minimize this. This is showing all the queries that we received from uh, from Tableau. And in fact, if I scroll down for a sec and I expand this query, this is that weight query. So if, if you remember when we dragged weight in Tableau over to the weight panel, this is the query that we received. We received over from um, uh, from uh, from Tableau in order to expose it. Actually, it, the, uh, the query is up here above, but we essentially are translating that and getting the answer for all weight members. What is this, what do we do with this? The query right above it wasn't executed by admin, it was actually executed by a user call system, it was actually at scale, right? So at scale then conducted its own query and you'll see that at scale is actually doing the same thing, but it's actually beginning to instantiate this. What I mean by that is because one user wanted to use weight as a filter, at scale figures someone else might want to use that as a filter. And in this, of course, in our script here, uh, they're right. But you know, generally speaking, it is going to be right. The, the, whenever someone uses an element as a filter, it's because by and large, you know, it is a filter. Uh, it is a measure. Uh, it, it is a hierarchy, right? And, and that kind of reusability is important. And at scale is generating uh, these materialized uh, aggregate tables. So if I refresh this page, we'll see some of the MDX queries that came inbound. So this last query that we received uh, is a 0 0.185 query. And, and I failed to tell you how much it was before if I scroll down real quick. Uh, this guy took, you know, about 0.4 seconds against raw data and going against Tableau and SQL. MDX query comes in with a very similar MDX query, but now it's taking, you know, about, it looks about like 30% of the time, right? And this is on a, this is on just one small example. If I expand this weight query, what you'll notice here, which is the huge big difference, is that at scale can now fetch the unique members of weight, but now instead of going to the raw data, it's actually querying this, this particular table. It's called AS underscore ag uh, underscore some cryptic number WGHT. I can click on this table and it's gonna take me to another interface where I can see uh, perhaps the, uh, the definition of that, of a set of aggregate, or alternatively, I could take a look at the query that built this aggregate. The reason why that's uh, incredibly important is because when you have at scale in your environment, at scale is gonna utilize your underlying data platform for all of the raw crunching and, and manipulation and creating not just the, uh, the performance layer, but also all the calculation needed to go against raw data. And then we switch behind the scenes without the BI user knowing, we switch, we switch behind the scenes to point to our aggregate tables. This means it's gonna be a lot faster. It also means that if you're, if you're paying uh, for the heaviness of the query, if you're paying for the scan of data, by querying our aggregate tables, you're gonna be paying a lot less. So there's a lot of reasons why you wanna do this, provide very governed data sources for your BI consumers uh, to use and analyze. So that's at scale multiple BI tools, hitting a data service, some modifications. Um, what I'll do now is I'll just take a couple of minutes here to take a look at some of the uh, new other settings here in at scale. Uh, for example, this is the aggregate page is um, very similar to what we have for our query page. Here's our settings. We decided to consolidate all our settings. So for, for those of us who've been using at scale for, for a little bit now, remember it was a little couple of different places we put it all together. Uh, if we take a look at our engine settings here, all in one place and from a data warehouse, you'll notice on my environment, 
I actually have multiple uh, data warehouses configured. So I have, I have in, my, in my case, I have some Hadoop, I have some BigQuery, Snowflake, Redshift. Um, this should give you a little bit of a teaser of where at scale as a company is headed, not just the ability to support multiple data sources, but wouldn't it be great if within an at scale cube, you can have multiple tables from different data sources, right? That would be, uh, that would be uh, important, resounding, and, and uh, we heard you guys. So uh, a little, little more on that a little bit later. In terms of security, you no longer have to log out and log in to get to the user management screen. It's all in one place, right? So you can come in here, make whatever modifications you need to and return. And the support tab here uh, has consolidated where you get your documentation, how you get to the support portal, and how you actually share with us some of the support bundles so that we can help you uh, moving forward. It's, um, it's our, our attempts to clean up this, this environment, uh, give you some new uh, enhanced navigation steps, and, and also at the same time, adding a ton of, uh, of capability. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and bring back up my cube, and I won't just leave it here, but you know, we show, I showed a, a bunch of things, and what I didn't show you was Composer, and I'll just leave it on screen. We're not going to do much here, but Composer is this new um, environment here where I might want to take a particular field and make modifications. So we know you might want to do a, a slew of daytime modifications. We now provide a, a series of uh, regex expressions that allows you to make these modifications. You can see the preview right here on screen. Uh, the same thing could be the same thing is true for all the other. Uh, columns where you might want to make a different type of modification. Maybe it's a Boolean, uh, a, a, a date format change where, uh, you know, in the past we actually, um, we need to create additional columns and kind of go through the daytime change. So we're trying to make this a lot easier for everyone. Um, so that's a lot, but in, in, in at scale, re really, if you walk away with anything, for those of us who are fairly new to at scale, you are doing a light install of at scale. It's going to be a non-compute node. It's an orchestration node. It receives BI queries, it defines this data uh, service, and it creates an acceleration layer and really a cost optimization layer all at the same time. So it's really important for organizations that have uh, you know, data service you know, near and dear to their heart. They want some governance around their data service, but at the same time, they wanna give the users the, uh, the scale of the data and the distributive force of cloud and Hadoop computing to be able to get new valuable insights. So I'll take a pause hey, there. Chris, so, the next so we, we have time for, for one uh, quick question. We have a couple here, but I'll just ask you one to start and then we'll follow up with everybody after. Uh, but the question is, do we support role-based access control? Yes, absolutely. So security is a huge deal uh, for, for at scale. We have a couple of concepts uh, at the respect of the data platform layer. So if you have security in play that prevents people from seeing certain data on a data layer, we, we can do some delegated authorization, which means that I can take your AD credential, I can pass it down to the underlying data source, and we always challenge the underlying data source rule. So if there's any roles or uh, groups that you belong to, we can divvy up the permissions that way. That's the first way and probably you know, in my opinion, a very, very important way. But the other thing that we do is provide object level controls on the at scale side. So we can prevent users and groups of users to see their different projects, different groups. We have multi-tenancy built into the, into the product. Uh, and we have some capability around columnar level security with a feature called perspectives. And also able to um, uh, enforce role level security with something called a security dimension. Any others, Court? Right. Yeah, no, that's perfect, Chris. So, uh, you know, we, we only have a couple seconds here, but I just want to thank you for your time. And uh, if anybody is interested in, in seeing the demo again, we'll do this on a weekly basis. But we appreciate everyone taking the time to learn more about AtScale. Uh, again, for those of you who we didn't get to their questions, we'll follow up or have the, the respective sales rep follow up to make sure that all of your questions are answered. Uh, if you don't have a contact at AtScale, feel free to reach out to us either through uh, this webinar or through the website and a member of our team will reach out to you directly. So with that, I just want to thank everybody again, and we'll look forward to seeing uh, folks uh, in the near future.